Hi and welcome to my foggy office. Haven't been at my desk for quite some time but here we are talking about images that I took on my Tassie adventure. Well, my first image is a mountain range in the background. Foreground we have a bird on the rocks. The reason why I was wanting to do landscape shots with an animal in it because the challenges are quite high. Really push my photography, test myself out. Although everything I took, they're not fantastic images, uh, but they're challenging ones. Yeah, there's no wow factors here. Uh, you'd need to take a week at each spot to be able to find something of you know, interest later or just be lucky enough that things happen. But this particular image, mountain range in the background, clouds coming over it, an expanse of water in between. The idea is that we have a balance, a balance of, a, well, a fight against shutter speeds for two different subjects. And this is the reason why I asked Thomas Heaton to uh, take this challenge on as well. No, he didn't reply. It's been three weeks. I haven't heard anything from him, so I'm not going to, obviously. But anyway, it's good for me to do this. Right, so normally an expanse of water like that and that mountain range with the clouds, you would want to have a really slow shutter speed to cut down the little chops on the water with a bit of strong wind there. So we get some sort of reflection from the mountain range and the clouds in the sky. But that means our bird on the rock will be blurred as it moves around. So there's the balancing act. Getting a shutter speed that'll work for both and hopefully the bird will stay still enough that we don't get blurring or too much. There's a touch on that but I was happy with the image as a whole the way it worked out, but it's no way a factor. Now I want you to have a look in the right hand corner at the water. Froze it beautifully, it was slowed down enough. My shutter speed was one fifth of a second, so it's pretty slow. I was just lucky that bird didn't move too much. Now that's awesome, I love that bit of water coming through like that. And that's something to note when you're going to take some slow shutter speeds of um, water, but you still want some action in it. That is perfect. Love it. I have to uh, work on that myself. But if you look at the left-hand side, I left it open because that's where I thought I would get that type of look on that side, but it never happened with the bird in there. So um, yeah, there's this balancing act going on between a subject staying still and being able to have that water flattened out, smoothed out by having a very slow shutter speed. So it's interesting, um, it's a challenge. Have a go yourself. After taking that photograph, the rain was starting to get really heavy. So I started to go home and uh, this is what happened. Bloody typical isn't it? I just walked away because it was pissing down with rain and now I've got to run back 500 metres. There's a beautiful shaft of light come onto my scene. Right so as I run back, get myself, trying to get myself set up, there's a seal right in front of me. Great. This is what I, something like this is what I was hoping for. Uh, this seal was throwing this dead fish around, ripping it apart, having a ball. But it, um, it wouldn't get into the right position for me and finally it did and I get this shaft of light coming on to the mountain range. When it finally jumped out of the water and gave me something, the sun was starting to go back behind the clouds. So just before it took this shot and that would have been awesome if that uh, seal would have jumped at the right time there. 
but these are the things you face and it's how the cookie crumbles isn't it so it's all the, you make your own luck but it doesn't always work right going back to day four in Arthur's River I talked about in my last video buying some adapter rings for the lenses that I've got for the 7D Mark II. Now originally I bought all my filter holders and everything, the Kogan holder for uh, ND filters, gradient filters, uh, my polarizer, 10 stop filter, all are for the lens that goes on my 5D Mark II which is a 24 to 105, whatever it is, has a problem. Something to do with the drive motors for the focusing and all that. Anyway, it's stuffed and I couldn't bring it. So I left a 5D at home because none of the, well, the kit lens, the wide angle lens I have for this, doesn't fit. Anyway, I had to buy some adapter rings so that I could uh, use my Kagan uh, filter holder. So I did that. But to get what I was after, I needed two different sizes. There was, there was something like eight in the kit. It's all I could find that I could get quickly before I went away. You get what you pay for with uh, camera stuff, normally. In this case, of course it's true. $20, I only wanted the adapters. I didn't want the filters, but this is the only way that I could uh, get them quick, so I bought them in. You know, I thought I'd th just throw them out, but I gave them a go. And what happened was pretty much what I was expecting from cheap, crappy plastic. And that is, it's, the images are distorted, they're compressed a bit. It's changed the colour and it's compressed everything, so just, just something to... Uh, Think about when you're buying gradient filters, filters for, you know, to go in the holder. Don't buy the cheap shit. Go for the good stuff. Kogan and there's a few others there that are pretty good as well. Do your research. So we pull up to Arthur's River. Get out of the van. I'm thinking photography. My wife's thinking a nice walk with her husband. <laughs> I'm checking out what's going on around me. Don't you worry about that. Um, just down to the side here was lots of logs. Arthur's River coming in. My eye hit this image straight away. This outcrop of rocks in the middle, right in the smack in the middle of this turbulence between the river coming out and the ocean coming in. Now it wasn't a, a real high packed action uh, shot. It's nice though, I like it. It does show you the ruggedness of the ocean. But I reckon that, that's me on the plate. Action. Love action. As far as landscape shots concerned, I'd rather have action than slow shutter speeds. But you know. Anyway, so it's a nice image. It's no wow factor. You'd look at it on the wall, framed, you go, nice image, and walk on. In Strawn, on day two, it rained all day. It just kept raining. Finally, I shouldn't say all day because finally around 2.30 it stopped. My wife and I walked up to this waterfall. Of course you get to the end and there's tourists there. Uh, yeah, I hate taking photographs or speaking to the camera in front of people, crowds. So Derek does what Derek does and gets away from the people that are all on this landing right at the bottom and looking straight at the waterfall. But actually you can't take a photograph there without getting water on your lens. Waterfalls always have a bit of a spray. Get this mist coming off as the water hits the, uh, the water at the bottom. Sprays it up. Straight away I'm thinking left hand side. Get over to the left hand side, take the shot back, mightn't be as spectacular, but I can get the tourists out of the shot. I've got ferns covering me like an umbrella. It, it's another angle, 
uh, you know, everyone would be taking shots directly on a standard shot of it done a million times. I want something different. So for me, it was more about the base of the waterfall with everything swirling around. Now to get over to there, and this is the daredevil that I am, the water's running over the edge. There's another waterfall and it's about, oh no, six metre drop. I've got to go through where the water's pouring through. So it's really strong. It's a metre deep. So I've got to, now it's freezing conditions. This is a bloody cold day, as well as the water being icy. Uh, rolled my, took my shoes off and rolled my pants up. And I threw where I go. I took two shots, one a little higher, I'll get the waterfall from the top. Um, but there was a little fern branch in the way and I didn't want to snap it off. You know, disturbed nature, I, so I just took that base one. Water swirling around, really slow shutter speed. I love how the water runs off the branch that's full, or the trunk of a tree that's fallen into the water. The way it just coming off it looks really nice. Right, so we get to Stanley and I'm walking around the top there, tourists, and I get interrupted here and there, and I find what I sort of was after, and that was an animal in the scene, bird on the branch, because of the weight of that 300 millimeter lens on the 7D Mark II. The tripod I have, it's good quality tripod, but uh, it tends to dip a lot with the weight. So getting it set up quickly, can be a bit of a pain but I got the shot had to rush this one because birds will not sit on a branch for too long so I didn't have it framed exactly how I wanted all right so the next shot I walked around to the cliff and um, there's this tree stuck in you know growing out the side of the uh, cliff in these rocks thought it looked nice Houses in the background because of the angle that I'm on. Now here's a clip I had to leave out of uh, my video from Tassie because yeah, time had to cut it down. It was going too long. I need a rope tied to the railing. Throw it over. Climb down with one hand. Take a shot on a hundred metre cliff, and it would have looked awesome. But couldn't do that. All right, so. That wasn't going to happen. I'm pretty game. If I had a rope there, no, I wouldn't have done it. 100 metres <laughs> off the ground. Probably not that crazy, but man, I've done some crazy stuff to get photographs, I'll tell you. Oh, I did take a photograph from underneath. Now, every time I take a photograph with landscape, I'm always thinking about that it could be good to have it as a black and white. So think about that when you're taking a shot, a landscape shot. Okay, it might not work 100% in colour. Sometimes when you turn it to black and white, you know, it can really look good. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're taking a photograph of something. To my left, I saw this piece of artwork. I liked it, <laughs> and I still like it. Uh, I've got it, one of them is a screensaver, and that's the one with the birds flying off the beach you know the tides come out a bit so there's ripples there's all different textures here it looks nice but really hasn't transformed like I'd liked good image again probably calendar image but I'm going to blow that one up an A3 and put it up on my wall anyway I reckon I like it we went to this place and I can't even remember the name of it. I'll put it up there. I came across all these tea tree. Tea tree has beautiful textures in the bark. Lots of flaky bits, it looks really nice. And I had this scene and it could have been a great shot. Could have had some wow factor. But where I had to take the shot from, it was the wrong angle. It was over to my left. But that is the bank and it drops right down, two metres down. And I needed to be two metres over to get 
a better angle to get this branch that's coming across. Uh, well, the trunk of the tree, it's leaning over, coming back up, and you've got the head of leaves and everything on it. It just it really caught my eye. And all the tea tree in the background, because a light colour, you know, almost white and, and a bit of grey in there with the bark, they're very reflective, so they capture the light, and it goes right back real far in, into the background there. Now, getting down onto the beach itself, I come across something I haven't ever seen before, and that is the sand whipping up and moving like a snake as it's coming towards you. It looked awesome. I thought, I can't point the camera directly at it because I'm going to get sandblasted. I'll catch it going behind me. So I turned the camera around, put it up on the tripod, got it. some shots. Oh, it was frustrating, it really was frustrating. They're weaving their way across where the, as the ocean waves are going out, they've created these little runs at where they've sort of finished after each tide, hitting, hitting, and then moving back and creating another one. And the sand was following it. Why well, it gave it that look of a snake coming at you. I couldn't find the right technique to get it to look fantastic. I had it, this particular image I'm showing you, it had it all the way around me, but only half of it on this side you can actually see. Uh, I tried to bring it out in Photoshop and I yeah, just couldn't get it, it just didn't work. But it's something I really want to pursue. I don't know, I've never seen this on any other beach. And uh, so I'll, I'll really watch out for that. You know, there was really strong winds. It needs to be really strong winds. So something I'd really like to have another play at. Quickly talk about the last image that I took in Tassie. And that was on the last morning, there was a sunrise. Beautiful colour in the sky, no rain, lots of clouds. I woke up and just laid there. I couldn't be bothered getting out of bed. I thought, oh, it's nearly 7.30. Get your bum out and go and have a walk. It's not raining. Go and have a walk and see if you can find another photograph before you go home. There was this blood red sky that I didn't see from my little window in the high top van. Shoot off. At 100 miles an hour up the road, uh, and I missed it. And here's what I said on that morning. I didn't get up early enough, so I'm paying the price for not taking the time to get up a bit earlier than I really need to and get set up before things happen. I had to run up the road, try and catch it, and I bloody missed it. Yeah, so pay the price. But anyway. All right, so one of the, the other things about doing that landscaping with animals in it and stuff like pushing myself a bit further, trying to open my eyes more. It's all because of the reserve. I've taken so many photographs that I think would be nice and they just don't work. There's just nothing about them that's good. I love these uh, grey gums that we have here. The colours that are in them are unbelievable and everything else but it I can't get it to transform <laughs> onto film, it just doesn't work. So I try to open my eyes, trying to work out something better. As you can see at the minute, it's very foggy. I went out yesterday morning and I took these shots. And I'm getting somewhere. I think I've opened my eyes a bit more. No, there's no way effect factor there. But um, these particular shots, I'm going to use them for uh, photo manipulation. I have a play every now and then when the mood hits me and I have some time, have a little play and it might take me 12 months or something to uh, finish one of those. Um, I'm doing one for a place that I work at and the kitchen staff, they're, um, yeah, you know, I um, thought I'd do something nice for them, do a, a poster and I've done one for uh, housekeeping as well. Alright, that's probably enough of me waffling on. 
Hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> Not sure how this is going to turn out, neither. But anyway, if you'd like to subscribe, click on the subscription button down below and you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you'd like to go and have a look at my channel and have a look what I've been doing over the years, it's really me practicing at speaking to the camera, preparing myself for a documentary that I am making. It's going very slow, but um, it's got to be good. And uh, yeah, getting people to help me out, yeah, not, not that easy. I might have to um, see about some sponsorship money somewhere. But anyway, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife. See ya.